Okay, so to continue on with the Blue Ridge hot tub, uh, we have to take a look at solving the linear problem um, in each of these areas inside our Excel spreadsheet. Let me kind of move some things around here so we can kind of see how all these pieces go together. So each aquaspa generates the highest unit of profit. So let's one idea would be, you know, make as many of those as possible. So how many would that be? So as we kind of go through each of the constraints, we can see that if we make as much um, aqua spas of, as possible, we can only make 174, which then gives us $60,900 in profit. So I was already incorrect in my previous statement where I said that we can maximize with the usage of pumps that are available. So this solution is feasible, but we need to determine whether this is optimal. So let's go ahead and put this into a spreadsheet model. So we're going to organize our data in the spreadsheet. We're going to reserve separate cells in the spreadsheet for each decision variable. Create a formula that will be able to correspond to our input values for our objective function and also create um, some formulas for each constraint that we put in. Okay. And this is going to make sense as we move forward. And uh, from this point, I know that this PowerPoint slide is available for you in, um, in the As You Learn uh, module. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you in the actual Excel formula um, what this is going to be. So if you want to refer back to the PowerPoint at a later time, feel free to do so. I'm going to finish this up by showing you the real thing. So here we can see um, uh, in this particular spreadsheet, I went ahead and said um, part of my objective function is that my inputs are going to be here. So if I had one Aqua Spa, which is what I put here, and one Hydrolux, these are going to be some of the inputs. And I've created this spreadsheet in a way that if I change my Aqua Spa, let's say to a different number, you can see it updates the rest of the spreadsheet. Now, I'm going to a let Excel change these values for me. Okay, so these are the things that I'm going to change. Because the question I want to know is that if I made four of these, five of those, what's my profit, right? And have I used everything up? All right. So also what I'm going to do in my spreadsheet, I'm going to put things that will remain constant. So I know that if I produce one Aquaspa, Notice it's in this column. This is all the aqua spa column, right? So if I make one aqua spa, right, it's going to have $350 of profit. Also, one aqua spa uses one pump, nine hours of labor, and 12 feet of tubing. That was from the problem before. And if you recall that we've written all this down previously, Right? So I've just made sure that all these pieces were put together. Now from Hydrolux's point of view, one Hydrolux will give me 300 profit, requires one pump, six hours of labor, and um, 16 feet of tubing. Now let's take a look at what I have here in the formula. So I'm going to point your attention up here. And I am going to click onto the formula bar so I can see how all the colors work. So you can see that the first half of my formula is nothing more than looking at um, this cell, which is the aqua spa, multiplied by the number of profit or the amount of profit, plus the number of hydroluxes times the number or the amount of profit. So this is my total profit value. And what this really means is that, um, uh, hold on one second is that if I made one aqua spa and I made one Hydrolux, I should get $650 in profit. So we know that this is working, right? If I wanted to make two Hydroluxes, that will go up another $300, and it does, brings it up to $950. So what we want to do with our um, formula is we want to maximize this number. So these are the inputs. That's what we want to maximize. And we wrote this right here. This is what this represents, right? That's our objective function, and it's in a linear format. Now, let's take a look at what's happening here. This formula is identical 
to the profit formula, right? It says I'm going to take one aqua spa, multiply it times one pump, and one hydrolux, multiply it times one pump, and sum those two values together. So here we go. There's our multiplication, and then we add those together, All right? And if we did that, we can see that we use, if we build one aqua spa and one hydrolux, that we use two pumps. You can see the same repeats if we use, um, we build one aqua spa, it's nine hours of labor. Build one hydrolux, it's six hours of labor. Adding those together gives us, shows that we've used 15 hours of labor, and so on with the tubing. So you can see the consistency there. Now we put outside to the right here, this is how much is on hand. So at all times, this number here needs to be less than or equal to this number here. And that repeats itself through. And we've included those here in our algebra. The first formula represents pump, labor, and then tubing. The last thing that we want to be able to include in our algebra, which is not represented here, is what's called a non-negativity constraint. And basically it says that you can't have minus one aqua spa and minus one or minus two hydroluxes. They always have to be zero or more. All right. So this is how we set up the formula. And as a grader, I will expect you to follow this example over and over again. In fact, use this as a template, simply copy it and move things around. All right. What we're going to do now is open up Microsoft Data, uh, Microsoft Excel uh, Solver. If we go to the Data tab, you should be able to see in the upper right-hand part of your screen something that says Solver. If it doesn't exist there, you, what you'll have to do is you will have to go to File, you'll have to go to Options, you'll have to go to Add-ins, and here look at Excel Add-ins, hit Go, and make sure that the um, Analysis Tool Pack and the solver add-in is included in your Excel. And once you've checked those, then the solver should be there. So I'm going to click on Solver, and here's how we finish this particular assignment. So we're going to want to set the objective to be the total profit. So I'm going to click on the arrow, say this is um, my objective value, and I want to maximize that value. If this was a minimization problem, we would hit minimize. Okay. And we're going to maximize, we're going to set this maximization by changing the variables in these two cells. Okay. So what we see here is that we are set up in a process where we're going to maximize profit, which is this value here, and we're only going to change the numbers that we have here. Okay. All right, so that's where we are. Now we need to add some constraints. And our constraints are really um, identified in this portion of our spreadsheet. So we're going to add the first one. And we're going to say that cell um, uh, E9, which represents our pumps, has to be less than or equal to 200, or what's listed in... Um, F9. All right, we're going to add that. We're going to do the same thing for the labor. And then, um, oh, and then I'm going to add one more. And then there we go. Now we hit OK. So we should see all of these right here. Now, if we notice that we are actually missing our non negativity constraint, so let's add that as well. So I'm going to add one more. I'm going to say that, the, um, excuse me, these two cells have to be greater than or equal to zero. And I'll hit OK. So there we go. This is our non-negativity constraint right here. The last thing you want to check is make sure that your solving method is simplex LP. Right? So there are other options here, but we want to make sure it's on Simplex LP. Now, you might want to go into the options, and you could see some other values. Um, typically, the default is sufficient. 
um, automatic scaling and everything else just remains the same. However, um, there are times when this may need to change. Okay. All right. So now we're at a point where we can go ahead and run our solver. So I'm going to go ahead and hit solve. And um, you can see here is a pop-up that occurs and asks if you want to keep the solver solution. Go ahead and hit OK. And you can see in this example what's happened is solver already told us that we need to build 122 aqua spas, 78 um, hydroluxes, and this will give us $66,100 in our profits. So let's kind of come back here and earlier we said that if we um, just did a basic general view we asked ourselves you know if we just built 174 of the aqua spas we would produce 60,900 in profit and we can see here that 66,100 is ideal overall. So I'm going to end this here, and if you want to, you can go through the presentation that is available for you, and it includes everything that I reviewed here that will help you through the um, hot tubs or the Blue Ridge hot tubs example. All right, so with that, I'll leave that to you, and uh, good luck. We'll see you in the class.